Welcome to another episode of Frame by Frame, a series dedicated to the craft of filmmaking. I'm going to stand by two beliefs. First, Logan is the best Marvel movie ever. Second, Hugh Jackman must hold the land speed record for fastest actor over 40. F that fastest human ever. But allow me a moment to gush. Logan is the perfect intersection of innovation, acting, story, and action. Now I know this video is coming out a bit late, so I'm sure you've heard the news by now. Logan's Blu-ray will include a black and white version of the film. Now this got me thinking, how will that lack of color impact the viewing experience? And what, exactly, should we filmmakers keep in mind when shooting in color versus black and white? Well, in memoriam of Marvel's bleakest tale, let's explore the techniques behind black and white and see how Logan will hold up in monochrome. Okay, so there's a few rules to follow when shooting black and white. First, use contrast. In black and white, you can't create contrast with color, so you've got to do it with light. This shot of Jackman hitting the bottle is a great example of how to do just that. Jackman stands in the foreground, barely lit. The background he's blocked against, however, is much brighter. This difference in light values creates contrast. It also adds depth to this image by visually separating the foreground and background. Here, we've got Jackman brooding in front of a window. Contrast is created the same way as before, by stacking a dark subject against a bright background. But the reverse works just as well. Okay, so here, the foreground, or Jackman's face, is brightly lit, while the background falls off into darkness. Both Keen and Stewart's mugs are lit the same way. What you'll notice, too, about these images is that their backgrounds never fall off into total darkness. Okay, we don't have actors floating in the blackness of space here. There's two lamps casting light behind Keen, then there's small lights illuminating the china cabinet behind Stewart. Again, these splashes of light create a sense of depth while also reinforcing the scene's geography. So, as you can see, literally, contrast is a cornerstone of black and white photography. But, how do you use contrast to create a composition? Well, just look at the placement of this light beam. It guides your focus down to Jackman carrying Stuart. Also notice the light stippling the background. This fills out the image's negative space. The effect's kept subtle though. That way it doesn't distract your eye from the subject. What I love too is that this pattern on the background mirrors Xavier's perception of mutants in the old Cerebro. This is a beautiful composition as well. I know what you're thinking. Kyle, it's just a truck parked in the middle of bum nowhere. But take a second look. The sky's brightness contrasts the shadow on the ground. The sky and the shadow also fill up large horizontal areas of the frame. This creates a degree of symmetry which in turn visually balances the composition. Now there's another quality besides contrast you should think about when shooting black and white as well dynamic range. The term refers to the difference between the brightest and darkest values in an image. Black is on one end of the spectrum, white on the other. Shades of gray lie in between. The greater variety of gray shades in an image, the more dynamic range it has. Now, thematically dark movies like Logan tend to use a lot of contrast. If you want a less severe look, however, you'll want a wider dynamic range. This landscape shot from Logan showcases just that. There's both ends of the spectrum represented here. There's a clean white, the sun, and a clean black, the ridge side. Then there's all these gray shades populating the desert below. Don't be intimidated though. Composing shots with a wide dynamic range might seem complicated. I mean, after all, you're working with way more shades than you do in a contrast heavy image. The key though is to thoughtfully place your clean whites and blacks. These are the areas that will draw your viewer's attention first. So you can use these values to guide your viewer's eyes through your compositions. Now I know, for something called black and white, this subject's surprisingly complicated, and trust me, that is just the tip of the iceberg. But let's recap. In black and white, contrast and dynamic range are two ways to create compelling imagery. A filmmaker should also use their clean blacks and whites to direct focus through their frames. Now, I am sure director James Manigold and his DP John Matheson have forgotten more than I will ever know about black and white. They also know something else, that even comic book fans have had enough with a big budget superhero CGI f 
hackathons. Forget your mind-numbing set pieces and your brand analysis. Moviegoers just want films that have stories worth telling. And Logan's Last Ride, if it's anything at all, it's certainly that. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure to subscribe to this channel, Film Theory, for more fantastic film-related content. If you'd like to check out more Frame by Frame, click the frame to the left. Or if you'd like to check out a Film Theory episode, click the frame to the right. And until next time, my name is Kyle, and this has been Frame by Frame.